Hello, well here we are, six weeks since we went into lockdown to try and stem the spread of the coronavirus. And it's been a long time in many ways. And I've noticed over the last week or two, whereas people were very sort of okay and upbeat and were going to beat this, in the last week or so there's been a sort of a change of mood and I've experienced it too, a sort of a more of a desolation as the trauma of isolation and separation from family, friends, everyday living really starts to take its toll on us. And certainly people who have done research into collective trauma, um, I think it was after the Grenfell um, fire, they've sort of um, found that there is a sort of a, a way that these things unfold and I'm very grateful to Reverend Margaret for telling me about this from one of her study days. At the start of a collective trauma the impact hits out of nowhere and coronavirus was a little bit like that. We'd heard rumours and we'd seen some other countries but then whack it was here. We were affected. Suddenly everything shut down. Your churches, your shops, your schools, you're isolated. There's that impact on everyday life. Well, the people who look at trauma tell us that that's usually followed by a what they call a heroic phase, heroic response. And we've certainly seen that, and I thank God for it. The um, people who've leapt out to help, the volunteers who've gone forward to help the NHS and to help communities, the truckers working overtime and making sure that the shops are full, the shop workers. There's been real efforts to keep in touch with people and that's been really helpful. And there's been some great good fruits come out of this. A lot of online uh, resources, all kinds of things. But then the trauma specialists tell us we get this sort of phase, this downhill phrase, phase of disillusionment tiredness, apathy and you start to sort of lose that energy that you had to keep going and keep things positive and it ends, the disillusionment starts to turn when you actually reach the point of realising that this impact has happened and there actually is nothing that we can do about that. And yet at the same time, we can recognise the goodness. And it's recognising the goodness in people, in situations, the things that are still there for us, I would say love, that we see, that help us to that rebuilding and restoration. And that's where we are now as a society, really. We're starting to look at how can we come out of this? What can we do so that we can get things moving again? How might I respond differently in future to perhaps help things to stay good? And the good news is that the theorists tell us that we then enter, hopefully, into a wiser living phase. And certainly we need to do that, don't we? We had enough concerns before the coronavirus at how unwisely we were living extravagantly in the West, often at the expense of the poorer countries and certainly at the expense of the environment. Maybe we can come out of this with a wiser living phrase that helps us all individually, yes, but more so helps society and the world as a whole. So in this time, of our response to coronavirus when the country has done so well at distancing and quenching something of that awful spread, let us sort of know that we will come to this rebuilding and we will come to reimagine a future and please God let it be a future of wiser living.